Welcome to the show. Fun, fitness, wellness, and inspiration. If you're over 50, you've come to the right place. I'm Carol. For our wellness segment today, we're chatting to Jodie Atkinson, author of Have You Met My Grief? Some of us might have lost a partner, a pet, or even a child. We're going to chat about tips and strategies to help us through and also support others with managing loss. Unfortunately, most of us haven't been taught what to do, so we often muddle through. After the fun five minute fitness with fabulous Faye showing the chair option, we meet some inspirational ladies from a U3A writers group. They're finding writing great fun later in life. Maybe you've thought about writing and just didn't know where to go to get started. A writers group could be just the thing for you. Stay watching. Many of us in a relationship suspect that we may outlive our partners. But we don't expect this to happen until we're in our 80s or 90s. Sadly, some of us lose our partners much younger, in their 50s or 60s. And sometimes it can be quite sudden. Managing grief is a challenging process. Today we're chatting with Jody Atkinson, grief recovery specialist and author of Have You Met My Grief? Hi Jody, welcome to Over 50 So What. Great to have you on the show. Hi Carol, thank you for having me. It's such a privilege, privilege to be here. I'm so glad our paths crossed because this is a, such a topic, grief, that we haven't covered in our show at all. And, you know, almost weekly I'm meeting people who are experiencing the loss of a loved one. How have you got into this area and become a grief recovery specialist? Yes, it's through lived experience um, that I find myself here. Uh, in 2019, my husband suddenly was experiencing some uh, health issues that were really unusual for him. And uh, we learned that he had stage four metastatic pancreatic cancer. And of course, our whole life was just completely ripped apart. Um, life as we knew it was completely changed. And uh, after um, losing him to that cancer, uh, I discovered a thing or two about grief that I didn't know. I, I just felt like this hole I fell into didn't exist. And then suddenly I did know it existed and it didn't feel right to walk away from it, knowing other people potentially find their own way into it too, without offering some form of help. So um, I became a grief recovery specialist. So what were your biggest challenges when you were going through this initial loss? Uh, the biggest challenges were, of course, feeling like part of yourself is missing. I felt like I was going mad. The things that I was experiencing were really odd for me. I've never experienced um, anxiety and panic and fear the way that it did show up for me. And um, being sort of bouncing from foggy and numb and disconnected, no one really talks about what grief looks like or can show up like. So I really struggled with trying to understand what was happening to me. I didn't feel connected to my place in the world like I used to. And it was really, really scary. And trying to explain that to people, from my perspective, it felt like people were looking at me going, whoa, like you you have lost your mind, you know, um, feeling completely, I don't know, overwhelmed by such big, intense emotions and knowing that people were struggling with how to connect with me and people that I thought might reach out for me disappeared. Well, we hope that after having a few chats with you, we'll also help people understand how to relate to someone else who's going through that loss, because that is a big challenge. And we don't talk about, we're not educated on it. It, it just doesn't come up. We just, everyone just takes a guess at what they should be doing. A big thing I've learned is that people will put their perception across what they feel you might be experiencing. And they can quite often be so off, tar off target. Let's, it's... Um, you don't really know how I feel. So don't say that you do. How about you just ask me how I feel and let me tell you. And um, please don't question my feelings. Don't judge me and how I'm, how I'm trying to navigate this. It's all brand new to me too. So um, yeah, certainly creating opportunities to talk about it so that we, if and when we find ourselves in this space, it's not completely foreign. Are there any other specific things that stand out to you that are quite common with people going through grief? 
one thing I've learned is that through sharing my experience, people have gone, oh, thank goodness, I want, I'm, I'm not losing my mind. You've, you've made me feel like I'm quite normal in what I'm experiencing. So that's a big thing. I think uh, people often will express that people don't know how to speak to them. Uh, they don't know what to say. They'll quite often say the usual types of things we're used to hearing. Those are the things that um, that can lead to people shutting down and not communicating how they're feeling because they don't feel safe. We definitely will talk about you know approaching an, a person who is experiencing loss, and we'll do you know quite in depth dive into that bit. Now we used to for years and years talk about the five stages of grief and but this current thinking is not like that. Can you go through what the current thinking is? The beautiful Elizabeth Kubler-Ross did um, work in this space. What she came up with the stages of grief would be a description of what someone might go through in that situation. It was never meant to be prescriptive um, but somehow the stages were implemented into the space where people grieving a loss might go through. And a lot of people found it's not a stage by stage thing. And quite often people don't necessarily identify with a particular stage or in what the language that I hear is a label. Grief is messy. It's really hard to put a specific kind of formula in place, I guess. And it's really just about letting people experience their grief it's really unusual um, or really, sorry, unique to the individual, how that's going to show up. Like family members will all grieve differently. No one's wrong, mm. right? They're all just, it's unique to the individual because they've all got a unique relationship with that person. So what are your top tips for managing the loss of a loved one? Well, have people today who may have lost someone in the last six months, 12 months, um, and they're still not sure what they should be doing. What are your top tips? I found when I pushed back on it and tried to push through and and resist the emotions that were surfacing, I came off second best every time. So I think learning to not fight your grief, accept that this is a really unpredictable emotional period that you're going to go through and allow it to be what it is. And, and don't try and rush that. Finding the support that works for you is really important. People that don't necessarily judge you or ask you lots of questions. Um, they're just prepared to sit and listen to you and listen to your body. So if you need to take time out, take time out. If you're sleeping in the middle of the day, you're sleeping in the middle of the day. Your routines will change, your patterns, your eating, your everything changes. If someone wants some additional support, like they want to seek out a grief recovery specialist or some other information, what do you recommend? It's really unique to the individual. Some people will find bereavement counselling a way that they want to go. Some people will tap into their faith. Some people will want to um, maybe go to a um, bereavement group. With grief recovery specialists like myself, you can search for us. You can find us on the grief recovery specialist or grief recovery um, Institute and we do have one here in Australia. We can work with you online or we can meet with you in person. Well thank you so much for your time today. That's been a great overview and some great pearls of wisdom there for also being more sensitive to others that have lost loved ones. Thank you Jodie. Make sure you've got a chair handy or something you can just 
Grab on two. Two more. Okay, now we're gonna do a single tap. Just nice and easy and relaxed. And yes, that's fabulous Faye, and they're doing it in the chair. If you're not confident standing up, please follow Faye. Now we're gonna bring it forward, forward. Just make sure you've got a clear space around you. Okay, take it back, take it back. That's it. Okay, let's do it. Come forward again. Okay, you ready? Back we go. All right, now we're going to do a single tap to the side. Are we ready? Let's do it. Tap, tap, tap. Hold it there for a while. Tap. Yeah. And guess what? We're going to take it forwards. Bring it forward. Doesn't matter what happens, just have fun. Take it back, take it back. Walk this way. And we go. Walk and turn. And walk and turn. Yeah. That's it. This really gets your mood up. Makes you feel happier. Okay, one more set. Okay, back to double taps. Forward. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Just keep saying to yourself, I got this. I got this. I got this. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Double tap to the side. Tap, tap together. Tap together. Just work within your own limits. So you can take a small one like this if you like. Okay, let's move it forward. Yes. Looking good, feeling great. Take it back. Oh, how sad. It's over already. Well done, everyone. See you next time. You know the expression, everyone has a book inside them. Everyone has a story. Have you thought about writing your story down to pass on to future generations? Or maybe writing articles, poems, essays, or a book on your area of expertise? You might like to think about joining a group like the Bayside U3A Writers Group. Hi Carol. Hi Carol. Beautiful name, spelt exactly the way it should be spelt. Correct, no E. e. Yes. <laughs> Not Carolyn, Caroline, no, Carolyn no. with an E. Uh, how long have you been a member of the writers group at Bayside? Well, I've been a member, I think this is my second year. And you were a freelance travel journalist before? I was, um, for about 
16, 17 years um, working for some of the best uh, companies in Australia as a communications and PR um, executive. I went from that role to becoming a travel writer. And how did you get inspired by this group? I mean, what made you want to join a writer's group? Um, like three years well, I decided that I wanted to research and start writing a family biography. Um, my family is from England and I wanted to leave something for my grandchildren in terms of establishing their heritage. Mm. And um, I looked at three U uh, U3A and some of the courses they had and I found that the writers group was a very welcoming group. And so uh, I've been very fortunate to be part of it. And how are you going with your family history? <laughs> I'm going well. Um, it's, um, it's a challenge because it's one of those things you really do need to have the discipline to write, um, to write something most weeks if you possibly can. I mean, ideally you would write a number of words every day, but who's got that much uh, discipline? So I love, um, I love to do the research um, and then between the research and then spending some time in England, to get the sense, the, the sights, the smells, the taste, the feel of the place is really important to then trying to create or recreate scenes from your past. Yeah, it's great to have a legacy to leave to the upcoming generations. You know, it's a really big thing for a lot of people over 50 to start really investigating their family history. Well, it has. And I mean, ancestry, of course, with the programs on television and pe people's personal interest in in uh, researching uh, um, their own personal histories and ancestry has just been an enormous boon. I think nearly everybody I meet is doing something, you know, with um, their family research. And it's all part of wanting to feel part of the of where you've come from. I'm looking forward to finding out in the next year or so how, how far you've got with your family history. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Hi, Joy. Hello, Carol. Now, you've been involved since, what, 2013? You did a course on writing radio plays yes, or something? Yes, I what, did. What picked your interest to do a course in that? Um, I've always loved... I used to listen to radio plays. I'm originally from England. So okay. we only had, um, we didn't have a TV till I was about 10. Okay. So it was all around the uh, table having Sunday roast or that. Um, you listen to listening the goons to, or something? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, take it from here, Ken Horn, Round the Horn. Um, yeah, it was, it was fabulous, really. And they used to have plays, uh, radio plays, at night as well. So okay. um, fantastic stuff. So... I hadn't forgotten about them, but they weren't on here, and it was just... So you didn't have any radio plays here that you were listening to? No, no. Oh. So it was just seeing there was an ad in the paper in 2012 for U3A starting up. I was in a bit of a rut and thought, I'll go. And I did Australian history, Australian law, to, to see if it was different to the UK stuff. And then a few months later, they had a new course, how to write a radio play. Never written in my life, never. And I thought I'll go along, maybe they'll just tell us how you write it and show, you know, do all the sound effects, you know, yeah. or whatever <laughs> for the horses I was yeah. doing, um, or whatever it was. So I went, not realising actually that we'd be writing a play. Right. So Cheryl was there with another lady, Terry Adams, who was um, on Southern FM at the time with her own show. And they just said, you've got six weeks to do a radio play. And I thought, what? So you had six weeks to write one? Yeah. That's and your that, first time? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And that's the other three, what well, we had six of us there. And I think we've still got the original six people from that still in our group here. And I was quite terrified because, um, and Cheryl and Terry were great. We had handwritten, you know, notes given out on how to do it. And I got home and thought, this is mad. I can't do this. But I had a go. <laughs> it was Good awful, my first play. God. And I took it the net, like the bare but draft of it, and Cheryl was, is excellent. She's very constructive, but she said, "Joy, you, you know, you're a little bit wordy, anyway, as you can tell probably. Um, you've got to pull it back a bit." And I was like, "Oh, you know, yeah, oh, I like all this." But I went home, did my stuff, and it wasn't great, but it got my interest too. And then 
From there, I did more radio plays, and then a did few. Did you put the radio play on? Yes, the, um, Cheryl so, has it so you, you, produced. You wrote, the first six weeks you wrote it, and you produced it. It actually and was on. put on. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All of those were. Yeah. Wow. She knows a lovely man from ABC days who has a recording studio in his house in Brighton, and we go there and do them all. So it was excellent. Oh, and then. Oh, that's very just, rewarding to see that instant result like oh, that. Oh, it yeah, marvelous. And then a few years later, I, I love Pam Ayres, the, uh, the uh, English comedi comedian poet. And I thought, I'll have a go. And it's been just all these poems have poured out of me. And from that, I've been guest speaking. I do 10 pound pom plus poems. That's me. <laughs> I'm a 10 pound pom. Are and you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I came out here age 20 in 1970, just on my own. I didn't know anyone and stayed. So you've got, you're doing a bit of comedy now. So you're actually yeah. doing stand-up comedy where you're talking in comedy. I do. Oh, that's amazing. Probus, Rotary, Lions, wherever, and I love it. And last year I was actually guest speaker at U3A, Bayside U3A, and I thought, full circle. I, of 10 years later, I'm here doing my 10 pound pom plus poems. How amazing is that? That a person who's never written, I don't read really either, yeah, yeah. but it's it just came. Um, and then... Well, that's taken a whole new direction, isn't oh, it? Radio yeah. plays, comedy, Absolutely. Pamers, poems, well, wow. All so unexpected. That, totally. And if I hadn't have come done that, how to write a radio play, that would still be here, locked in. I wouldn't have known I could do it. Yeah. Let alone actually do it. So, and then so, I became one of the faces of Bayside Library and wrote a poem for that and went along and told them about my experience as a young child going to the library and being told, you've got to be quiet. Ooh, I don't like this place. Um, anyway. So what would you say to someone who was just thinking, oh, I'm stuck at home, I don't know what to do, or what, you uh, know, about starting something uh, new? Do it. Do it. Just jump in because there's no such thing as failing. If you don't like something, try something else. And it doesn't have to be U3A, but they have so many courses that if you don't like one, you can go and do another. Mm -hmm. And you never know what you've got there, what's up here, until you give it a go. Well, so look what I'd happened say, to you. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Would never, yeah, never knew, never knew. So. It's amazing, yes, it is, Carol. Absolutely great to just get out there. And, you know, you're not alone. There are so many groups out there for seniors, well, for all ages, I guess, but for seniors, yes, if you're on your own. I'm, I'm on my own. I live on my own. I have and no... And never written before? No. Yes. So you get out there and you'll meet lovely people. You'll be involved. It's good, I think, to be in the community. I love that feeling of being part of a community and I've met lovely friends here too so so I think you'll be here till you're 100 at the rate this rate <laughs> I hope so I don't know if I don't want to live to 100 unless I'm fit and well but you know who knows but I just say to anyone yeah just go out no one will come to your door no one comes knocking but if you go out and go to U3A or what other clubs I'm in Probus as well and they're good, I think, too. So just, just have a, a go. Get out of the house and have a go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. How's your bucket list going? By watching this show, you should pick up some ideas for things you want to do now, when you become semi-retired or retired. Maybe writing novels, poems, radio shows, plays, historical works, or even just some family history to leave as a legacy. Give it a go information on all our guests is on our website if you or others would like support with processing grief check out jody atkinson's have you met my grief please connect with us through facebook youtube or insta we look forward to hearing stories on fun things to do after 50. just drop us a note whatever your age keep moving that body because movement is life. Five minutes a day and you're on your way. I'm Carol O'Halloran. See you next time.
thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?